the world famous Sail Power Steam Museum. Uh, we're doing our Zoom broadcast number 14 tonight, 14 of these vessels we've done so far. And uh, we're gonna conclude with ne next week, to next two weeks on the Schooner Heritage. But tonight we have a fantastic program on the Isaac Evans. Uh, I'm Captain Jim Sharp. This is my beautiful little wife sitting next to me. And uh, funny thing here. This is my wife uh, sitting next to me here, and uh, we're we're going to try and see if we can smooth out this operation so that it does it goes a little quicker and a little easier. <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about the museum. It's an incredible museum that we have here, of course. Uh, it's been growing and growing. My wife and I started just a dozen years ago and uh, been growing ever since. Here's what it looked like last year at this time, last fall, this is what it looked like. And uh, what an incredible time, what an incredible change it, there has been since that time. Of course, you always start with a backhoe and when things get rolling and the neighbors complain a little bit about the noise, then you, <clears throat> then you know you're making progress. And now, we have, after a year's uh, hard effort, we have this wonderful picture here. Uh, there's a picture up in the upper left-hand corner of the museum building, the new museum building that we're just putting up. 4,000 square feet, wonderful building we're putting up. And of course, down in the lower section, you can see the uh, fall flower in the foreground and the new building in its completion. Uh, we're going to have, have a lot of boats in there, all kind of boats we have. 20 uh, Optimus Prams, we have two Harrishoff 12 and a half, so we have two 1920s Beetle Cat, and we have a, a couple of Friendship Sloops and a Muscungus, and uh, all, they're all going into that new building. Now you can see uh, at the entryway of the building, we have this incredible stone structure done by Joe Ostiello. Joe Ostiello, amazing guy, all out of granite. Uh, it's a schooner running wing and wing away from the museum right there in the entryway. And it was given to me by my wonderful wife, Meg, for my 88th birthday, if you can believe that. 88th birthday. I can't believe it happened. Why do we have 20 wonderful Optimus prams? Well, let me tell you about our skiff program. Our skiff program is one of the greatest things that we thought about. And uh, I think we have the wrong picture up there. But uh, our skip program is the greatest, greatest thing we've had for a long time. Uh, it's a wonderful program. The kids, uh, the kids come, and uh, they're they're little kids. They're just from uh, age eight to fourteen years old, and we give them a free, a free sailing school. Seven days for five days a week, and uh, it's it's a wonderful thing for the kids. They just love it. Uh, little tiny kids, they don't know a rudder from a centerboard, and uh, the, well, that's the thing is not shifting now. There, <laughs> they don't know a rudder from a centerboard, and then we teach them what to do. And they all come, they have a great time. Day one, of course, they're, they're coming for their orientation. Day two, uh, they're, they're learning how to rig the boat. They're going off on just one person at each boat. Each of these little boats are only uh, little optimus prams are six feet long. So their own captain. Day three, they learn to really sail away from the dock. They turn the boats over, they write them up. They learn that, that the boats will not sink on them. And uh, then day four, while they're out there going around the buoys, really learning to sail. Day five is a great race and the kids all get out there and they go like mad around the race course. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing to see them do that and they, they learn so much in such a short time. Being their own captain, they learn all kinds of uh, uh, self-preservation things. They learn not only uh, uh, how to sail, they learn how to set the sails and they learn how to set the rudder, they learn how to set the boat so that it really goes ahead, but they also, also learn that their own perseverance. Look at this little kid now, the captain, he's just so proud of the fact that he's the captain of his vessel and uh, he's doing everything for it. 
And there he is with his buddy. His buddy's in the other boat on the other side there. The two of them locked up together, going along, going along before the wind. And uh, they're just having the time of their lives. At this point, they're having such a good time, they forget all about their telephone. They forget all about the internet. They forget about all that stuff. So here's the way we work the program. If you donate $100 to put a young sailor through a week's course of sail training, by golly, we will match that with another kid. We guarantee you we'll put another kid in with him. And if you give us $200, you'll get four kids out there learning all of this stuff. $600 get uh, $300 to get six kids out there and so on up. You do the math, my God. It's a terrific thing. These uh, wonderful Optimus Prans have been donated to the museum, and we get all kinds of wonderful things donated to us all the time. Here we have a morning in Maine, uh, the, the party boat that runs out of Rothland doing two hour sails. Uh, a month ago, that was donated in its entirety to the museum. The business and the vessel and the whole thing. Now we're searching, looking around, trying to find a captain. We, we hope to find a captain to do that. So if you know, of any captains that have a, a Coast Guard certification for carrying passengers on a small vessel, even a 50-ton vessel, uh, we're trying to find them. Well, let's go on to our program tonight now. That's enough of the commercial. The Ward Shepherd and the Isaac Evans, uh, those two are, those two names are synonymous. That's the same boat. Uh, this is going to be a, a great program, long program. The Boyd Shepherd was a uh, very early Delaware Bay oyster boat. Now back on the turn of the century, oysters were just an amazing piece of gear. Oysters were America's number one fishery in New Jersey. Can you imagine that? Number one fishery, my God. The old street vendors down in Philadelphia, down, at, well, down where the truck is down at second and nine or something like that, I think it is. I'm from Philadelphia, I should know that. It was an amazing thing. They had, they had these great big pretzels, these big heavy-duty pretzels that they used to sell vendors on the streets out on the street corners there. And they were selling oysters with them, the common old oyster, the mundane oyster. At the height of the fishery, more than 500 schooners were running around Delaware Bay down there. They were all drudging oysters. My God, what an incredible business it was at that time. Well. These vessels, these wonderful vessels that were oystering, 500 of these vessels, one of them we're gonna tell about tonight. One of them is still alive right here on the coast of Maine. Actually, there are a couple of them still alive on the coast of Maine. But the first one we're gonna talk about is the old Boyd N. Shepherd. He was built in 1886, right there in Morristown, New Jersey on the river, Morristown River, and uh, it was built by the Shepherd family. And uh, she's one of the typical type of bald-headed schooners, centerboard schooners that they use for dredging oysters. You can see in this picture her reef points. She's got three sets of reef points on her mainsail, three sets of reef points on the foresail, and two sets of reef points on the, the staysail, or jumbo, we call it. And the reason that they have that, of course, is because they have to control the speed. <clears throat> they have to control the speed of the vessel so that it doesn't go too fast and have the and lift the dredge up or go too slow and anchor the vessel with the dredge so they have to be very careful and keep the vessel going just at the right speed here's the dredge uh, the, the wire dredge that they had that they put over the side they drag that along behind the vessel as it goes along it rakes the bottom and it rakes the oysters into a little catch basin and of course, then they haul it up over the side of the boat and dump, dump them on deck. That's the method that they used in order to dredge these oysters out of the mud in the Delaware Bay. Amazing, uh, amazing amount of oysters in the Delaware Bay. It was an unbelievable, unbelievable, wonderful resource for New Jersey. And the, the towns grew up around the oyster industry. And the towns by the name of Bivalve and Shell Pile, wonderful places like that. How would you like to live in Shell Pile, New Jersey? <laughs> At the peak of the industry, by a little place called Port Norris, they had more millionaires than any place else in New Jersey. The prosperity extended all over the region as far as Philadelphia 
and all the surrounding area. And the schooner Boyd and Shepherd was built right there in the heart of that whole, that whole thing. Here's a picture of a dredge, typical dredge. Uh, doesn't have very many oysters in it, but we hope that they'll do better with the next dredge, the next haul. And uh, anyway, that's the kind of a, of a rig that they used in order to rake the bottom in the mud and dredge up these oysters that are so wonderfully inexpensive to buy and a gold mine to produce. Here's the Boyd M. Shepherd when she was, uh, I rather, I think she was rather new right here. I don't know what the occasion was on this particular picture, but obviously they're not dredging for oysters. They're doing, uh, uh, doing other things and it must have some kind of a, of a celebration going on. But the Boyd M. Shepherd <clears throat> was quite an uh, interesting vessel, a pretty vessel in, when she was new. Here she is running her yaw boat behind her, pushing along. Somebody's down in the yaw boat. It looks like they might have the hatch open down there, as a matter of fact. Typical of these old yaw boats. They always have troubles of some kind, and they're always trying to check them out and keep them running. But that's the only power that they had in the boat in order to, uh, in the calm, or to keep the vessel going when they needed to. 500 of these vessels, 500 of these vessels were in the oyster business at that time. I'm sure you couldn't go out on the Delaware Bay without having a whole lot of your friends out there, your buddies out there to wave to and uh, plenty of company, I guess, back in those days. Well, the, the Boyd Shepherd dredged and dredged down there until about 1909. She changed her name. The uh, Isaac Evans, the Evans family bought her and uh, changed her name to the Isaac H. Evans, the name that she retains to now. Uh, the Evans family, they were all oyster people back in those days. <clears throat> and of course, the, the style as things, as things progressed and motors became more common, they put motors in these boats, they cut them down, cut their rig down and uh, made them into power draggers then of course they could control the speed a whole lot better and they didn't have so much rigging and all the rest of that to do with. Back in uh, the, the days in 1939, of course, the old Isaac Evans still plugging away, doing her thing, uh, dredging oysters. And uh, she, of course there, as you can see, she's pretty well loaded up. Let's, let's, let's take a closer picture at this, now you can see the pile of oysters on deck. Imagine the tonnage of oysters she has on her deck right there. You can see her yaw boat up in the Davids back on the stern. And of course, she's a working day vessel. She's uh, got a reef in her mainsail. I think she has her, her complete foresail up, but you can see on the staysail, she even has a reef in her staysail right there. But uh, she's under sail doing her thing, going like mad there. Well, the vicissitudes that these oyster boats went through back in those days, of course, it was hard work back in those days. And in the wintertime, it was hard on boats. Of course, they laid them up in the wintertime. They didn't, they didn't go beyond their summer season dredging out there. And uh, uh, then, of course, that's, that opens up another avenue of problems. Here's the poor old boat goes to the bottom. It's the Isaac Evans, the 60-foot oyster boat. My God, right down Port Norris, down, down on Port Norris Pier, she sunk uh, in, the, in the middle of the morning. And uh, they were there all day long trying to pump her out and get her back up again. They had to wait until the next day. I guess they figured the ice is what did it. The ice running down the river there at that time. The ice was so heavy and so strong and the river current punched a hole in her stern and she went down. That was the first time that she sunk, but not the last time that she sunk. Well, she continued working <clears throat> till 1971, right through the decline of oystering, the Great Hurricane 38 and the Second World War and all the rest of these, these uh, uh, vicissitudes and years and years of dredging. You can see her new profile there. She's got her pilot house in her. <clears throat> She's got the uh, big engine in her now, propeller down uh, in front of the rudder there. So that, that was the more modern way the oyster dredging. 
Now in 1971, things changed. And a uh, young fellow named Douglas Lee came along. And uh, Robin, can you hear me? Is it still going? Robin, can you hear me? Is it still going? Well, maybe she's talking him into it. Well, I got to tell you, <clears throat> I want Doug Lee to tell you this story, but uh, the Doug Lee apparently got his uh, education, came up through on the Richard Robbins. Richard Robbins was another one of these oyster boats down there that uh, his father converted and put into the windjammer trade. And he, of course, started out as cook and then made and then finally was captain on the Richard Robbins before he was able to buy the Isaac Evans. So back in those days, he, of course, was a young fellow. <clears throat> and so was David Allen. And uh, Dave Allen, who uh, later on was the captain on the uh, uh, Janie Regan. And here, here these young fellows are, uh, all, all getting their education on the, this vessel. Uh, Dave Allen, are you on? Captain Dave Allen, are you there? I think he's probably listening in. I'd like to know what the fascination was about, about uh, smoking in those days. I'd also like to know who the mystery man is with the pipe in the middle. Uh, Dave told me that he came up on the Angelique uh, when he first made his entry into Maine. And uh, of course, the other person there, Doug Lee, with the smoke coming out of his mouth. What, what was the fascination? Why did we all smoke in those days? Well, I don't know, but we did. Anyway, in 1971 then, Captain Doug and Linda Lee of Rockland went down to the, went down to the, uh, the New Jersey shore and they purchased a vessel called the Isaac H. Evans, who was still oystering in the Delaware Bay at that time. They fired her up and they brought her up on her own power. She had a GM 671 in her and they used that when she was a power dragger and they fired up the old 671, those old engines, they're wonderful engines. They run and run and run. God, I've had, I've had them running generators and other boats, tugboats, and you can hear the pistons slapping around in there and you put a little of that starter fluid into them and they always start. They're amazing engines. They gobble up the fuel they call them screaming mimis, but they run forever. Well, he brought her all the way back up to Bath, put her up on the beach in Bath, and went to work on her. Both he and Linda and the crew of people, and uh, they gave her back her masts, her original sail configuration, and uh, they worked on her for two years there, and uh, happily we were able to put, put her together, did a great job, and made a complete sailing vessel uh, out of the old boat, uh, back to her early days. Uh, when they when they got together, what could they do but put down a frame, get that boat up at on the high tide, just as high as they could get her <clears throat> on a frame, and then they must have gotten a couple of bulldozers uh, and uh, hooked up a great long purchase there. You can see the tackle on the under the stem the tickle they used in order to drag that thing up the beach and get her up to where they could work on her. Doug and Linda, young people and uh, their helper, they set up a bandsaw right there. <clears throat> and of course they had to get her under cover. So they went to work and they built a, a cover and built a house, a literal house over the top of her. I, I'd like to get Doug on here to explain who's with him there. But uh, I hope we'll soon have him join us. The first thing I had to do was build a house. Well, it's not, not easy to build a house over a vessel. You're talking about a vessel that's probably 20, 22 feet wide and uh, 70, 70, 80 feet long. So you have to build a whole house. But that's what they did. Build a house, put a house up, and then put plastic around the house. And... Uh, so that they can go to work and tear the vessel apart. You can see the bandsaw they have right in the right in the front, right by the bow there. And uh, 
they go to work and uh, take the bits and pieces out of her that <clears throat> were, they were unable to save. Of course, a vessel now, 85 years old vessel is at this point, so she naturally would have some bad wood in her, some bad frames, and some bad planking, and all of that would have to be picked over, analyzed, and what percentage of uh, the, the item, the, whatever the piece of wood is, whatever percentage is bad, they would have to replace either that in partial, partial or in, in its entirety. And they'd go through and pick out the frames that they had to replace and put them in her. Of course, get the entire boat in order to do that. But of course, she was probably pretty open down below anyway, not having many any accommodation or anything yeah. in her. Well, they would have to take some plank off, and of course, the, the entire vessel would probably have to be recalked and replace the plank here and there, whatever needs to be done. It looks like there are quite a lot of plank they're able to save on her. Of course, being in salt water all those years, certainly the planking is uh, quite well saturated with salt water, and uh, it looks like they've replaced a few pieces of plank there, but for the most part, it looks like they're saving quite a lot of it. And of course, we caulking the entire vessel. Then, of course, it gets to near the end. They get a coat of paint on her. And then, of course, she really starts to look like a vessel. So that is very encouraging. And get the bottom paint on her. A coat of paint covers up a multitude of sin, they say. So all that, uh, all that slobber of caulking and everything else on her is just covered over with a beautiful piece of coat of paint. Well, all the stern, new, new name on the stern, and then comes the rigging. They get the mast centered to her, and they start bending sail on and doing the no. rigging and uh, getting her ready to go overboard. Expound, expound a little bit on what you see here, will you? Oh, yeah. That's I, a, just switch, I just, I just that's, switched back. All right. That picture is of uh, the Evans and the Richard Robbins, and that's uh, our first summer at the North End Shipyard. Not the first summer sailing, but the first summer at the North End Shipyard. So that would be 1974. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're right. That's 1974. Yeah. And uh, ah, in the ah. way in the background, you can see the Victory Chimes down at her old dock. And uh, that's... Oh, that's is that a, right? Huh? No, I, I guessed that wrong. <clears throat> yeah. So... Uh, you're already back to already back to Rockland. I still got you in the Kennebec River. That's it. There, that's you see that. That's leaving the leaving the old uh, coal pocket in uh, downtown Bath after we had uh, fitted out, put the uh, rig and the sails in, and um, we're towing out for the first time, headed down the river. Towing out, the, the, yeah. And yeah. that, and we didn't know a thing about a yaw boat, of course. Because uh, uh, and that's uh, Noah Keith Hardy and uh, Jim Carlton running the elbow, right? That's right. Later on down the river, they got very frightened because it was quite rough, unbelievable. We swept out of the Kennebec River uh, with the speed of the tide and everything else we could do, and hoisted the foresail uh, with it blowing uh, quite hard from the uh, southwest. And uh, we weren't making any headway, but we found ourselves abreast of some wind, no time at all from the current. Placed in the force, so we were yep. in up forward there. We were up to our knees in water on the deck. Yeah, it was, and no uh, mass boots on, so it was pouring into the galley. So up you, forward, we were essentially sinking. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, we got out by Seguin and uh, got the main salon slack sheets and headed down east. And and that night uh, we uh, we ended up in Tennis Harbor. Big swell. I remember. Yeah. And we had to beat into the harbor because we uh, uh, we uh, picked up a line in the propeller of the yaw boat, a big line. Being and, unfamiliar with yaw boats. I think it was uh, our main halyard. And uh, uh, and we had to beat into the harbor and anchor. <laughs> Just but, a car. So the next day was a Sunday, and we had passengers coming aboard in Rockland. And uh, we went up the Muscle Ridge Channel. Nobody could talk to us on the radio because we had FM. Everybody else had AM. Couldn't see a thing. It was thick fog. Nothing. We went from boy to boy. Uh, our compass had never been swung, but, you know, we just kind of felt and smelt our way up the Muscle Ridges and into Rockland Harbor. And, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. We got there and all of our friends who were aboard cleared the skill saws and sledgehammers out of the cabins, cleaned them up, and I got a ride to McGunt Market and got the food. You like that picture? The one you have for, up now? Can you for the full boat and coming aboard. Can you, uh, the picture, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I, I switched, I switched back, Doug. Huh? I, I switched back. I switched yeah. back. See, I just can't res I can't resist. I gotta I gotta go back to this picture. Tell me about this picture. Oh, uh, that's a great picture. That's me uh and a uh, Captain Dave Allen on the Richard Robin Sr. Uh <laughs> the mystery man who was uh that's Mike Mike Harrington. Mike Harrington had been uh our <laughs> Uh, a crew member on the uh, Victor Chimes until he uh, he couldn't stand it anymore, <laughs> and he came over. He's a very successful businessman these days. I think he's retired, but that's the three of us. Mike Harrington came. Mike Harrington came over on the adventure and worked for me for the end of the season. You're right. That's him. That's him. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You recognize yeah, I him now? I, I wouldn't. I'm afraid I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I know well, that's, I like that uh, that's uh, me and David smoking those terrible little cigars called Perotis. Yeah, they were kill. <laughs> they were killers. <laughs> they uh, were. Well, yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip ahead, flip ahead, uh, and yep. uh, well, just to give give you. A, a little a background of what we've been showing. I've been talking away about telling about it, and I've been probably filling everybody full of lies, but to give, give you an idea uh, of what went on. Of course, oh, yeah. all of this will be on YouTube. It'll all be on YouTube, and you'll be able to uh, see it all, all over okay. again if you can stand it. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, that... I wanted to wanted, I wanted to get that picture. Who's the other full in the picture there with you? At Jim. Carlton, he's a, he and I are childhood buddies. And we still keep in touch. And uh, he was one, he was, Linda and he and I, we were the original partners in the Isaac Evans. For, I see. Uh, for the rebuilding and the first uh, season. Huh? This is mm -hmm. a, a, a primer on how not to build a building, uh, a winter cover. The only thing that held up the building was posts <laughs> to the deck of the schooner. And that's down in the schooner, this picture you have here, Jim, uh, looking aft. Um, yeah. whoop, wait a minute, you moved ahead too fast. Yeah, that, looking aft on the inside towards right. the transom and new frames. We had to reframe the whole vessel. Yep, see that? Those are all new frames. The whole vessel. The whole Is thing. Is that right? Yeah, and except as you, uh, uh, it, way down low where there was bilge water in it, the frames were fine. Yeah. Built water and oil from the yeah. Yeah. engines. Don't forget the diesel oil. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. the Coast Guard made us take the ceiling out. We tried to discourage them for that from that, but luckily they we wouldn't did. listen. Luck luckily, we did because uh, the, the frames were all rotten, and but we got her all reframed. Yeah. And she's coming back together now. And uh, this and is when this is got to be, be, be spring of '73. Some, yes. because we have some um, seams are caulked, definitely, maybe puttied. I don't know. You can see that because they're yeah, painted. They're, yep, they're paid. Looks seams. like you you could, you could save a lot of planking though. Did you? Have, we, we did you at didn't first. Put off a lot of what we had to do is we had to find some cheap paint and paint the planks on the outside of the vessel that were poor because they looked good on the outside, but there was nothing to them inside. But these were pretty good up at the bow because of the flare. It was uh, midships and back aft that she was uh, quite poor. At yep. the turn of the bilge, especially. Now, Linda took all the paint off the hop. We bought a great big- uh, Rockwell. Rockwell grinder. This is a, a power to tools back then aren't what they are today. They weighed more than 12 pounds. And Linda uh, ground down really? the top sides. I remember that uh very vividly uh she would stand up on the stage and, and prop the um the the bottom of the grinder the the, the trigger end uh into the uh into the tuck of her waist and just swing that thing back and forth yeah. for hours grinding off paint went all the way around the entire vessel yep and, uh, we yep. were so glad she did it and we didn't have to do it got uh, heavy now that bandsaw you see right there see the bandsaw uh, the wheel, yeah. 
Yeah, that we still have that. Yes. It's at the North End Shipyard. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, a ship yeah. saw. Yeah, it is a ship saw. Oh, got the got the cover down, and uh, we're gonna launch it. We think. And uh, we there, did. There's uh, the cover laying. The cover yeah. laying on the ground alongside it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we you left turn the mask, it down in a hurry. We, Wait, we, to we, get it launched, we put most of that cover uh, under the vessels to make a skidway, and uh, we uh, <laughs> we had it down a ways where we couldn't launch her. We tried to push with a bulldozer and got it so far that uh, uh, the bulldozer couldn't do anything, and the tire was real high. But uh, a bunch of guys came down from the Bath Ironworks, and the Bath Ironworks tug put a line on it and hauled it right off. And that, that we were very lucky because that was July 12th, a Thursday. And we didn't want to be launched on well, Friday no, the 13th. No. We, we didn't, need, didn't need any more bad luck. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So we would had to cancel a charter trip and everything. And then we had to have a bit of a stability test. And turned out we had to figure out how we could pass it. And Doug had to go down to... New York to the technical people and talk them into accepting 10 long tons of ballast. Put on the inside, because we had no ballast. We had no idea. We were really surprised when they said you had to add 20 tons of ballast. 10. 10, 10, 10 yeah, 10 <laughs> tons, wrong spinner. <laughs> but we did, and, and that was in it for a, a long time. Jimmy told one of the people yeah. seeing us load those five pound pieces uh, pigs of lead aboard, brand new, newly cast aboard. Jim said, this is silver. Yeah, cargo of silver. We're taking it to South America. <laughs> and, <laughs> to a lady bystanders. Stood, the and a lady stood back, took a picture and said, oh, thank you, and got in the car and drove away. <laughs> <laughs> but there we are. That's the first summer. That's the first summer of the Isaac Evans sailing in Penobscot Bay. Yeah. We're having our first, we went uh, nine, nine weeks, nine weeks. Uh, um, nine, um, yeah. Eight full weeks plus a couple of, uh, um, a three-day trip at the end of the season with that charter we had to cancel. So uh, we went full for six weeks, which was great. And yep. then a couple of weeks weren't quite as full. And then the charter group, which was full. And so we did okay in half a season. Yeah. Was she, was she pretty, pretty tight? Thing? Pretty uh, tight right? Was she year? tight? Well, one of the things we didn't rebuild when we uh, did the whole project was the centerboard trunk. Oh, boy. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, she was very tight, except the centerboard trunk. It leaked like a sieve. Yeah. Yeah. The deck took a bit of time to sell up, too. Yeah, and the first week out, uh, the deck, uh, had we've been under the cover, so the new decking, old decking, all the decking uh, leaked quite badly. Uh, but my solution was I cut out pieces of plastic, heavy plastic from uh, the cover it had been over and uh, the yeah. size of bed sheets. And I gave a piece of plastic to everybody. Well, two. Two. So you one. could shingle them. Yes, we got bunks of side by side, so to speak. And, uh, and you could lay in your bunk because it was foggy and it <laughs> rained every single day that first week out. Uh, and, and the second second week out? Yeah, no one saw us. No one knew we were here. And the, uh, But I remember that I, we had a lot of tools on board, so I gave everybody a shingle with a big uh, slab of uh, seam compound, uh, like, like peanut butter, you know, seam compound, and a putty knife. And they'd lay in their bunk and they'd putty <laughs> the undersides of the seams on the deck that <laughs> were dripping on them. But you know, that worked because it trapped the water in the plank and she made, made them swell up. Second, uh, the yep. week after that, she was dry. Amazing. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was very exciting. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this, this picture must be much later on. Oh, yeah. It certainly was. That's when uh, uh, that's that was when Ed Blazer was captain, and um, that's was when um, a new stability test was performed, and we put the ballast on the keel. So she has a topsail. And um, we had we put, uh, we yeah. put a topsail on her. Didn't have a topsail before so that had summer. The ballast on What's that? Yeah. The, the, took, what year was that? That was well, a, probably 1985. Yeah, 85. That picture's taken. 80. 85. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. although yeah. Captain Ed started sailing her in 83, this picture would have been 85 
or later. Yeah. Yeah. So um, well, we always should... had the top mast yeah, on here, but um, we didn't have any permission to fly a topsail. Did Josh uh, and uh -huh. Jess, did they fly the topsail this summer? We, we did. did. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, I've got it up a few times. Good. Yeah. 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 That's a lot. That's a lot of sail at Topsail. And yeah. Absolutely. It definitely helps. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, the, the Isaac Evans Very won great. the first great schooner race we had oh. in 1977. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We re we started mm. that race again and she was the the overall, you know, wow. she was the winner. She won by um uh, she won the against the Grace Bailey when she just had her bowsprit jib boom almost over our David Plank. The finish line was the uh, Bucks Harbor. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay, the finish line was Bucks Harbor, and we won, but it was some close. <laughs> and behind that, uh, behind the the uh, Maddie and the uh, Isaac Evans was the Stephen Tabor. We were ahead of the Tabor. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't yeah. there an interesting story with why the Coast Guard gave the Evans her topsail? Um, we did the stability yes. test. Yeah, that was after she was capsized in Egamogan Reach due to a wind shear. And there was extensive Coast Guard investigation to that, uh, what happened. Uh, and uh, they, they determined it was a, just a freak, freak thing, wind shear. And we hauled her out uh, and... Uh, because we had to relocate some of that lead pig ballast, you see. Uh, and so yeah, we said, we're gonna, do we do one thing better. We, we took it all out and yeah. cast it as a, uh, in chunks as a, as a, uh, a ballast keel outside. And uh, when the new stability test was done by request of the US Coast Guard, Marine Inspection, uh, the uh, architect said, uh, uh, and the Coast Guard, you know, you guys can put that topsail up now. Never had one until that. And the Coast Guard very much wanted us to do that. What's that? You guys, you guys are getting ahead of me. Where, where, <laughs> where are we? Where are we? What look, year? Look at this picture. Where are we? Oh, this yeah. is the North End Shipyard. Yeah. Yeah, that's our building yeah. right there. Yeah, this is in Rockland. And uh, let's see. Over here. Yeah. You have On the, the left. They don't know your point. The left, you have the heritage mast and somebody's on the Marine Railway. I don't know who. Uh, but the heritage. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Back when the mastheads were white. Yeah. And that's. Yeah, uh, is this that's about 1983? What's that? That about that, oh, that's got to be, uh, let's see. Sometime in this period. <laughs> yeah, that's probably about. Uh, Do you know, who knows? I don't know. These photos were dated 1988. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's when it yeah. is then. Yeah. It sounds right. That looks right by the paint scheme. She no longer has a black waist. She is uh, all white with a stripe on her. Yeah. And this must be when Brenda has no, this. No, no. No? No. Oh, it's Eddie. Ahead. It's Eddie. Okay, Eddie Glazier, Captain Ed Glazier. Yeah. Yeah, has her. I was hoping yep. was, I was counting on that. Huh? I, I, I was counting on that. Then, well, yeah. there's a little, little delay here. This is, this is just p pictures around on deck. I don't know. I guess maybe this was Brenda at that time. I don't know. That's then, a picture, that's a picture of her sunk in... Um, Agamogan reached after she uh, capsized, and the only thing sticking up was the uh, Thomas and the flag. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. Uh, part of the deal there was that they were in the middle of attack with no way on. The yaw boat was in the water, but unfortunately it wasn't running. And so the, they got caught um, right there on Agamogan Reach when a, a very fierce um, wind sh shift came through. It's like the airport. From the northwest. Airport wind shear. I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard of it doing anything like that. And then after this incident, a, um, a number of different people approached me and Ed and told us about their near sinkings, uh, the similar uh, situation. So it can happen. We were out in um, Jericho Bay. On the Heritage. We on, the on, on the Heritage during this. 
and we were kind of expecting it to come along and it was really fierce when but it came it was a regular it was a uh you know, like a line squall and we could see it coming and we were prepared for it and it just kind of blew through us as it were we had a lot of sea room and we were underway we yeah. were moving yeah yeah. Didn't you have an open hatch up forward there? An open hatch over the galley that was right at the rail? A four chips no, no, that's, that's the wrong vessel. That's the, uh, uh, that you're recalling the Pride, uh, the Pride of Baltimore being knocked down in the squall where they had put in an actually an illegal hatch right over the galley stove. Uh, no, the no, right? the Evans, yeah, the Evans didn't have anything like that. that. No, she just uh, was knocked over. Yeah. Did, you, did you shorten the ends up in when you rebuilt her? Did I what? Excuse me? What was that? Shorten, did you, did you shorten her up when you rebuilt her? Was she over 60? Oh, yeah, we had we, the whole stern was the whole uh, transom, the stern was falling off. Uh, and so we knew we were going to have to rebuild it. And what we did is put a couple of come alongs and we cut everything away and tilted up. We didn't, we didn't change the bottom point, we just tilted it up uh, so that she was. Uh, <laughs> Uh, about uh, was it 17 inches she had to be under 65 feet yeah, and so we took uh, eight inches away by changing the rail up forward instead of making it real pointy we took eight inches away there and we took the rest away she was about 66 something and we took the rest away by tilting the stern up slightly the coast guard at the time insisted that the uh, 65 foot rule extended from rail to rail the forward not, end, not no. deck, not registered length or anything like that. So the forward end of the rail at the bow to the aft end at the stern. Yeah. And oh, the rules were very, very different over 65 feet. Yeah. And she, and, you know, and they've been very lax about that particular rule. Oh, it's a nice picture. What's going on here? Is this a reflection in the water? Yeah. 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 That, that, that's her at the bottom of the Agamemnon Reach. Uh, what? I, I guess our picture is pretty poor. Yeah, I don't. That I don't. Uh, that, that's a nice picture. That's a nice picture being hauled out. Uh, oh, actually, she's putting being put back on the water at the North End Shipyard for uh, uh, annual maintenance some year. When did you say these photographs were taken? Eighty-eight. Yeah. yeah that's this, a lovely photo. Yeah. yeah. She's quite handsome right there. Yeah, isn't she? Like uh-huh. You didn't put the key of the lid on the keel in that picture? I can't see. I can't. Oh, sure there is. Yeah. yeah. It was put there in 1985. Yeah. So this picture is uh, uh, 93 or later then. Uh, oh, eight, yeah. Eight, eight, 85 or later. Who painted this one? Oh. Brenda. Yep, yeah, Brenda. This, yeah, this, uh, she's gray. Uh, that this is a rather recent photo is, uh, of uh, this kind of, and uh, that's her charging along with her uh, gray painted hull. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's always, nice to, always nice exciting show. to sail on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she got the National Historic Society recognition. recognition. Um, did Eddie Glazer do that? I'm not sure if he did that. It was uh, all uh, there was a fellow there from the National Historic uh, um, Trust. Trust, and um, he any vessel over 50 years old in this fleet um, became um, a National Historic Landmark. Um, some of us are still waiting oh. for that stage. <laughs> <laughs> <Too late. laughs> yeah. <laughs> the heritage is only what 39 now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. That's uh -huh. a, that's a, that's at the North End shipyard with the Isaac Evans in the foreground with a mast right. taken out. There you are. The mast laying on the dock next to the heritage outboard right. uh, beyond. That's the Louis R. French tied outboard of the American Eagle. So that was four, four vessels there. And then, and then there were four vessels staying there throughout the winter. Yep. Covers are all on and everything. There she yep. is. Yep. Yeah. This is so then she was painted gray. 
Yeah, when uh, Brenda liked to have her painted gray, and she painted the rails uh, different colors at different times. Uh, mm -hmm. she act, Brett, Captain Brenda actually did an awful lot of work to this vessel. She had the stern completely rebuilt. Ooh, that's yeah, that's a cool. nice picture. Yeah. Not that? Yeah. Huh? No, that must have been. That must have been Brenda. Well, it looks uh, like the hull think, is uh, white. Yeah, I'm not sure it is Brenda, but it could be. Um, no, it's I, not. It's great. But it, yep, it, it has the top so that's furled, so it was after us. It's, it's uh, either Eddie or Brenda, probably Brenda. But it's mm -hmm. not gray hull. You look right down there. And maybe not. Okay. So I don't know. I can't, can't tell. tell. For sure. Can't tell. Could be. Yeah. Brenda, Brenda, are you on? Brenda, uh, are you there? She's not on my own. Brenda Thomas, are you there? That's quite a sea there. Yeah, mm. it's, it's a week on. Pretty glamorous, by. isn't it? Hmm. Oh, there she is. There she is. 99. Pretty, pretty glamorous picture, huh? Yeah. Well, I was hoping Brenda would be able, be able to be Here's on and be able to speak up. How old was I? When we started sailing the Evans um, in '73, and, and with passengers in '73, we were 25 and 26. Yeah. <laughs> and Linda was captain. I got a captain's license a bit mm -hmm. later, but you had a captain's license before that, and were captain of the Richard Robbins Senior. Yep. In 19. Mm -hmm. Oh. Doesn't matter. 71. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. First met Brenda. She was a um, uh, cook on the Windamine. She just stopped working at the bank. She said, the, the sea is the life for me. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. What's going on here? That's a uh, new waste planking. This is very recent. This is, uh, isn't this Katie and uh, Adam? It could be. I don't know. I don't know either. Oh. Do you, anyone know mm -hmm. the date on this picture? No, but that looks like her old bow, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Looks like what? Her old her bow. Old bow. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So that's a, this is a spring outfitting, but some waist planking is being replaced behind the fore rigging. So this has got to be when uh, Captain Brenda owned the got that blue rail yeah, there. Yeah, blue rail. That's right. That's Brenda. Yep. Yep. Uh, at the North End Shipyard. Mm -hmm. On the way, this is an extensive spring outfitting job, I think. Because when, yes, because when we hauled out the vessel uh, for the rebuilding of the stern, we hauled her out stern too instead of bow. It's, it's about to. That's, yeah, and this, this she is very serene, all laid up or for the winter. And this, of course, it's probably spring. Work's going on on deck on these vessels. And both of them have black mastheads now. Yeah, she's it, uh, she has a yaw boat is uh, uh, in the stern davits. Oh, there she is. Why, why the black mastheads? Oh my! Why, well, why because the black, black mastheads. Well, what was what was that question? Why the black mastheads? Why the black mastheads? Well, that is actually the old fashioned oh. way, old fashioned way of doing it was black mastheads, right. pine tar. Right. You see, they only went right. to uh, they only went to white mastheads when you could get white lead based uh, paint uh, readily, yeah. and uh, it's my yeah. contention that uh, they uh, were painted white because uh, when the captain, who was a big shot in his little community, came home at the end of the season, he you know he was a deacon in the local church and the tallest thing in town, uh, other than his mastheads. Uh, was the cross on the top of the local Congregational of Baptist Church. So he, you, uh, he it, it's a Christian symbol is what I'm saying. He changed the, they changed, it became popular to paint mass uh, white instead of you leaving on pine tar. Turns out pine tar is a much better preservative in today, in this day and age, where a paint's not worth a darn at all, 
Uh, it doesn't have uh, yeah. any uh, preservative qualities because it has no lead in it anymore. Uh, uh, pine tar, yeah. uh, to my way of thinking, is the only way to go because uh, it's up there, it seals everything, the water can't get in. It also helps preserve the standing rigging because when you try to put pine tar on the standing rigging, you don't want to get it on the white paint. So you don't do a good job on the mast head and you don't do a good job on the rigging. And so both of them deteriorate. Yep. And the other thing is it takes such a short time to put that pine tar on there compared to getting it all painted and sanded, scraped, etc. I replaced the uh, cross trees on the heritage twice with the mast in, in the water uh, in their early years. So they lasted about uh, maybe 10 or 12 years. You have to replace them. One minute I pine tar them, haven't touched them in 20 years. Yep. Yeah. But that picture you see, that's that's uh, on the uh, wedding uh, ceremony picture. That is on the yeah. Isaac Evans, and that is uh, Doug and Linda. There I am, my captain's hat on, marrying Captain Brenda to her Ryan. then yep. her then husband. Yeah, and right at right at the at the wharf wedding ceremony and everything. It was, a, mm -hmm. it was a hell of a reception we had. It was right in our dock building. Yeah. Dancing, it, oh, contra dancing, line dancing. It was wonderful. Went on half the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess the marriage didn't last too long, according to what she told me. Oh, no, no, no the there were some problems with the marriage. It, uh, it uh, didn't work out. Yeah. Well, yeah. The real problem, uh, the real problem, the real problem, Jim, was um, was uh, she and her husband uh, decide to buy another business, another vessel, uh, the Rendezvous, a summer excursion boat, harbor uh, cruise boat, that interfered with their time running the Heritage. No, 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 running the Isaac Evans. Yeah, that's the one, but running the Isaac Evans. Brenda had all... Couldn't be in two, can't be a one captain on two vessels. At the Bre same time. Brenda That's had right. actually bought that vessel um, before she met Brian, just uh, barely. It, it, uh, it really was a tremendous strain on the marriage. She was pretty tired too, wasn't she? Pretty, oh, yeah. Yeah. The rendezvous? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the rendezvous. Oh, yeah. yeah, she was well, a wreck. Like, yeah. 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 I remember. Well, Stella Park, goes. Yeah. Fell apart at Knights Marine here in Rockland. Gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, oh, man, schooners are hard on marriages. Hmm. Yes, so they are. Go. Look at that. That's the uh, Isaac Evans yeah. uh, at, uh, right off Camp Camp Island in the Deer Isle thoroughfare. Oh, she, she ended up on that ledge uh, yeah. coming about. Right near Hell's Half Acre. Yep. Um, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, oh, we saw her go aground. That? That's where the Mountie went ashore there, too. The what did? Which one? Years the ago, right, right on Camp Island. Yeah. Who? The Maddie. The Maddie, Maddie went through, yeah, went through two tides there. Yeah, oh, the Bold Island ledges, yeah. Yeah, she folded over the yeah. ledge. Whereas the, uh, the eyes of Kevin yeah. just sat there nice and high, and that she didn't get into any serious complications till later that night when the tide came in. And uh, for one yeah. reason or another, she mm -hmm. filled. We were there. I was there. We saw her go aground. We were sailing by in the Heritage and said, uh-oh, and rounded up right there at... Uh, uh, Hell's Half Acre. Yeah, Hell's Half Acre, and uh, went over. And, and, of course, by then it was too late to get her off. And it so was she, the top of the yeah. tide. The worst possible and, luck. And the night tide wasn't any higher than the day tide. But they managed to pull her off in that two o'clock in the morning or something, three yeah, o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Even though there was fog and rain and a thunderstorm going on. Yeah. It was a lovely evening. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. she survived. Yeah. Got towed back to the North End shipyard that next yeah. morning. And uh, hauled out yeah. and uh, uh, had some extensive repairs. Yeah. Wiring, yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hull repairs too. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Well. Yeah. But uh, about every every schooner in the bay has been aground one time or another, huh? Well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We're all just human. That's right. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, that is, that's is. Cap that's Captain Brenda and her crew. That's Captain Brenda. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Look at look at this next picture. <laughs> oh my god. It's kind of distorted. That's all right. Despite so many oh, um, into the basin. Good grief. Did she... <laughs> Man, did she actually sail into the basin? She did. she did. She did. That was uh that was amazing. She was very, very proud of that. I think she would she's be doing 14 knots. Doing How 14 knots there going into the basin. With the <laughs> all that tide goes along at about six, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, she's being swept in there. Yeah. She thought she had a sports car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. Uh, oh, somebody took that picture from yeah. on shore. Hmm. Yeah. That's a great photograph. <laughs> yeah. Well, Amazing that she did that. There she is. Yep, uh, Brenda was not afraid yeah. to sail a schooner. Now, this isn't this yeah, more recent? Is. No. Now, this is a gray hull again, isn't it? Yeah. Still the Isaac Evans. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a, at her birth there, right in the front of the very yard. That's very true. Where all those flags are there. I do. Can you, what the flags well, meant? The I don't flags. know. Oh, just they're all up. Who knows? Can't read them. Probably, got, got them aboard, yeah, so you put them up. Probably profane. No. How about how about uh, just up at <laughs> Bay Harbor? Yeah. Cel no, celebrated the great schooner race or something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Coming into the harbor. Yeah. Commonly do that sort of stuff. Oh, that's a nice picture. I like that. I hope she doesn't hit that island. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nice picture. <laughs> yeah. Distinctive red pennant. Yeah. yeah. Then we come up to 2017. Got a change coming on here pretty soon. Yep. What's this? 2017. Yep. 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 Uh, this is uh, 2017, isn't this? Yes. Ooh, uh, Brenda? No. I don't know why the date is 17 because that's when she went, um, you know, broke free from the American Eagle, I thought, in 17. That was June 17, that photo. So two months. Okay. Before. Okay. Because it was like October 30th when uh, the big, huge, enormous storm hit us here in Rockland. It was uh, 70. blowing 70, 70 miles an hour here in our cove and with seven foot seas. And, uh, she was next, tied next to the American Eagle and um, um, got away. And my my crew, Captain's Ben and Captain Sean, lassoed her as she went by the Heritage. Hey, Jim, can we go back two frames, two pictures? Yeah. If you don't mind. This is Keith Davey. Oh, Keith, yeah, sure. If we could go back to, I'm just curious. I think I might have been in one of those. Yeah, I think really? the guy with the hat back there behind, uh, well, next to the mate that's wearing the bikini top. I think the guy there with the hat was me. Ah, be damn. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I, we sailed with uh, Brenda a little bit in 17, so that must be it. The, uh, there's a little lag in the, in the, when I switch these pictures, there's a little lag time there before the image comes up. So that, that was the one... The 2017. That, that one, yeah. That one. Yeah. 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 I think I'm in that. I think I'm in that picture. That's cool. Thank you. I just wanted to see that again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, then March 2018, I guess, uh, according to Brenda, she gave the boat to Adam and Katie. And, and uh, is that correct? No, that was like November 1st or October 31st. Um, of 2017, 
They they purchased the vessel for one dollar. It was complete with a. It was seventeen. Seventeen. I think so yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. they 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 took over and they changed her name back again to the Boyd M. Shepherd. Yeah, that was her original <laughs> launching name. <laughs> Adam and Katie. That's at their wedding, I think. They were they were uh, uh, a great situation. I thought they had uh, they uh, could have done it, but the COVID got in their way because they were basically running the uh, dinner dinner cruise uh, operation. Yeah, and and uh, Adam was a Adam's a professional chef as well as a captain, but he'd given up his captain's license then, and Katie was a captain. Oh, is that yep. right? Yeah. Katie, are you on there? Katie, can you unmute and, and talk to us? <clears throat> well, I guess Katie isn't there. <laughs> 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 oh, well, she was all painted up beautifully there. Yeah. Straight around her rail and so on. Yeah. Yep, looked yep. good. Yep, they, they did a lot of work to yep. her. A lot. Yeah, Adam and Katie spent a Dude. fortune uh, having the having the bow built, uh, rebuilt. The whole see, Brenda had rebuilt the stern oh. some years before, and uh, and uh, they yep. uh, rebuilt the bow. A lot more work than uh, originally intended because we thought they're going to have to replace the stem. Well, of course, the stem on a vessel like this is exterior to the planking, bolted on over the hood ends. Uh, but there's something in the inside yeah. which is the real stem called the apron. And that was rotten. Yeah. yeah. That's Katie. That's Katie at the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. With the Angelique yeah. in the background. And the, what's the name of the, uh, the yeah. brigantine? Uh, what's the brigantine's name, Josh? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, Built in East Booth Bay. Belongs to the guy down in. Uh, the actress now? Actress. Now she belongs to. It, she belongs to our yeah. good friend uh, Ray, Ray Williamson. Williams. Ray Williamson bought her. Call the Frank Swift. Call the Call Frank the Swift now. Frank Swift. Oh really? What? The Frank Frank Swift. Oh, is she? <laughs> oh really? Good for him. Huh. Good grief. Yeah, he changed her name. The Frank I don't blame him. The prior owner had changed the name. And um, a friend of ours in East Booth Bay had rebuilt her well, ages Scott, ago. Scott Kennedy built her uh, right beside the main drive on East Booth Bay and named her. I can't remember. Oh it was it's a, almost unpronounceable. Uh, Wyatt? Not a mem uh, I, can't, I don't remember. Oliver C. Wyatt? I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't <laughs> remember it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> well, then the Covoris came. I, I don't know what. When this picture was, but uh, well, it was when it, Katie and Adam had like, her, so yeah. it was 80, 18 or 19. Yeah, it look, it looks, yeah, it looks like Kavoris 19, doesn't it? That last one was either 18 or 19 because it was the colors that Adam and Katie had her, and they were the two years that they sailed her in 2018 and 2019. This picture is older because she's got a gray hull, yes. Yeah, that's an older one. Yep. <clears throat> yep. So, yep. The new owners. It's the new owners. <laughs> yep. Well, we have there another. We have another business partner as well, who's just not pictured in this. But Jim, do you have a photo of him as well? Andy Tisco. Yeah, I have a picture of him. <laughs> Uh, I have a picture of him coming up, but I wanted everybody to get a good look at the, the primary owners here. You know? Yeah, we took that yeah. right when we took her cover off um, before we changed her colors. So her how colors. how old how old were you in that picture, Josh? How old were you? Uh, in that photo, I was I'm I'm 20 years old. See, you can be a <laughs> <laughs> cool. I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. We're very tired there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it happens. It's good for you. Yeah. Owning a schooner is the one of the best exercise programs. 
absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Andy. Andy. Yeah, Andy's on with us too. Mm -hmm. He's he's here. Good. But yeah, see, we just got our mainsail up in that photo. The hatch of the yaw boat's off because we're trying to get her started for the season. And we probably just floated over anchors trying to get those up on that little work dock up on her uh, starboard bow. Ah. Huh. Yep. That's at the North End Shipyard. Yep. yep. Tied up next to the Heritage. Yeah. 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 So the first thing you got to do is haul her out. And clean her bottom. I understand she was in the water for a couple of years, huh? She was. Yeah, she was. She didn't sail 2020. So we hauled her out in May, this past May. So I think it had been two years. She was very mm -hmm. dirty. Yeah, Lots did a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. It's crazy to see these photos. Mm -hmm. yeah, there it is. That Josh, you had that was your job. You had fun. <laughs> oh dear. Yep. My goodness. Yeah, if you power see walk. if the you see her, her blocks though, it's funny where she's blocked up was exactly where she was blocked up before. So she had just a massive colony of mussels there for a few years, and they're probably still there because they were under the same block. So <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, yeah. We should have asked the diver uh, where the where the where she was sitting, have it shifted ahead a foot. Yeah. Next time. Yeah, next time. Yeah. Oh, there oh, yeah. it is. <laughs> oh, poor Josh. You recovered that day. You yeah. did. We gotta put, gotta put that picture on Life Magazine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there isn't any Life Magazine. You can send that to Dirty Jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mike Rose. Mike you Rose. Can was, you can see what he was thinking about down in the lower right corner there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of really awesome volunteers help us out, and beer and pizza goes a long way. So There's, some of them are on here right now. So thank you again, guys. You're the best. <laughs> Then, then, then you went and got plan. all these old white haired, these old white haired guys here to come down and tell you all about the bottom, huh? This was such a great photo. It's John Dugley and then Ed Glazier and Josh. And it was funny. I recorded this whole conversation, but they were going through showing what each one had done over the years and who did what. And it was, it was really cool to see so many years and knowledge between these three people. Mostly, mostly we said, no, that didn't happen. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Have they told you that you've got a lot of courage? Yeah. Huh? We've been, we've been told that a few times. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. You know what it means? You, it means you're really crazy. You're really crazy. <laughs> the lower, the uh, lower left, uh, the picture, the lower picture, uh, you can see the lead keel. Yep. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I think right there you're trying to figure out who replaced the stern post last. What? Who replaced the stern post? Oh yes. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Who's doing that work? Well, Josh. That's Josh. Those are some long days. You gotta scratch out the old name and put new name on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got so lucky with that haul out though. We hauled for six days and it was like summer. It was the end of May. It was beautiful. You never can tell. Yeah. Nope. We got lucky. Very yep. lucky. Oh, there's me freehanding. What a terrible job. But I had to just get it on there for legality. Yes, that's right. You have to. Yep. Yeah. Block letters. That's yep. pretty good for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it works More pain. it works yeah exactly yeah. <clears throat> what's going on here lots it's of pain painting in. the water line ah, painting the water line that's always fun yep. yeah oh, spring's yeah. right around the corner guys <laughs> oh don't we know <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah thanksgiving christmas and oh my gosh it's spring <laughs> Here we go again. 
Oh, oh man. man. More uh, volunteers with pizza and beer moving everything from land to shore. Oh, yeah. I see. Moving the spas out of the, co out of the uh, around, huh? Yeah. 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 All the rigging. Yeah. Bending on our sails. Yeah. 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 It's going to get pretty big when you start doing that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this was our first sail. This was a funny day. Yeah. So we we were rafted up the whole time in our home to uh, Schooner Heritage, and we needed to move. Uh, this was before we hauled. Yep, and oh, we needed to move, but we had everything rigged. So we we're like, let's just go for a sail. Why not? Right. So we did it. We just cast our lines off. We had our volunteers on. We went for a little celebratory sail. That's Josh and his dad cheating in the four. I'm I climbed up aloft to get some video. And oh, that was it was that's kind of when it all hit us. We were like, this is really cool. Never mind it being our first time driving with a yaw boat. Yeah, so that was <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Learned a lot that day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I seem to remember that pretty. Get a few donuts out in Rockland Harbor, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> Trying to get back to the dock and come in with the yaw boat. So. Trying to come in on a low tide with the center board up while it's blowing. 20, 25 right off your port bow. Oh, I was scrubbing all of the overheads. It was insanely uh, moldy. So the guys were swinging spars up. I was scrubbing down the low deck that day. Oh, this is gonna be one of Brenda's photos. Yeah, I think this is one of Brenda's photos. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I got the mixed up. Oh well. That's okay. Yeah, nice. Well, that's, that's another good. one of Brenda's. You know, you know, she is the fourth oldest active sailing vessel in the country. Yeah. Um, commercial. Yeah. Yeah, commercial vessel. Commercial sailing vessel, and she's 135 years old. Yep. Right? She's the Remember oldest me? living oyster yep. fishing schooner. Yeah, she is. Really? What One of the three. oldest living oyster schooner. Is she really? Yeah, yep. she is. The only ones alive are the A.J. Meerwald and the Janie Riggin. Uh -huh. How about the uh, the cashier? Uh, she's uh, much older, but she may be completely gone. But she's I not know. a schooner. She was. I mean, she's she's not rigged. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, she cool. was in eight, the eight built in the 1850s. We always thought that that wouldn't be a good one to get as a uh, in for the windjammer business with a name like cashier. Right. <laughs> in, later, in later years, in later years, the design of uh, oyster schooners in Delaware Bay changed remarkably. Uh, but in the day of the Isaac Evans, it was really a coasting schooner used as an oysterman. Right. right. Oh, I love this photo. This was taken of us this year coming into Booth Bay Harbor from Rockland. Josh and I had just finished. The decks were completely black before we got on board. And he and I spent days with just little orbitals, just sanding away all of it. it made such a mess. But when we oiled it, it was so beautiful. The decks just came back to life. So Great. I love that. This photo really shows that. And funny enough, uh, Tenants Harbor was Doug and Linda's first harbor uh, anchoring the Evans, and that's where Jess and I and uh, our crew had just left after our first night on anchor. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's wonderful. That's you, a great story. You were heading right? in the opposite direction. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Isn't that something? That's great. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to uh, take your time be before you go out around Pemaquid, huh? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You do. Oh, this is awesome. Brenda's so, been so sweet. She's given us so much of her Evans, you know, gear that she still has, and she's loaned us her pennant. So this was her and her daughter that day dropping it off to us. Yep, Very along awesome. with some Evans mugs and T-shirts. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Yeah, it's a really yeah. it's in great shape. Yes, obviously. Well, thank you all for thank you all very much for coming and great. 
letting us bring the uh, history of the Isaac Evans to the fore here. That concludes it, unless you have a few more little quips to tell us. Thank, thank you very much for having us, Captain quips. Jim. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Well, and, um, and the Evans will keep on well, sailing. Really she'll, be, she'll be sailing out of Booth Bay Harbor Shipyard next summer, uh, offering day sales and weddings and charters and overall just an opportunity to be a part of the preservation of the ship. You're gonna you're going to um uh, you're gonna offer lobsters aboard? We haven't decided yet. We're definitely offering oysters though. Ah <laughs> that's what uh, Adam and Katie did. Absolutely. They had oysters. Yeah. This was uh, this is the 14th uh, Zoom program we've had. This is the 14th uh, interview that we've done of these different schooners. We have one more coming up in two weeks, our 15th one. Will we say the, the newest one for the last and the best one for the last, you see. So we're going to have Ben and, and Sean and you again, Doug and Linda. And now that you know how to do it, we'll be able to do it very quickly. <laughs> In the meantime, if you want a good book, why even you know that you can always you can always get a free copy of with reckless abandon forty years of voyage in my memoirs. Hmm? We got one of those from my you. memoirs. <laughs> yeah, you have one of those. Absolutely, Great. we well, traded books. Yeah. yeah, I hope you were, I hope you read it. Some of it's even true, you know. Well, <laughs> we had to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> a lot of salt, I guess. Okay. Oh, yeah. Pretty salty. Thank well, you. Great. Been a great. Been a great evening. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much.